So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity, God, to come before your presence, God. I pray, God, that you let someone get something out of this Bible study that they do not leave the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So we are talking about the parables of Jesus. We already answered what is a parable, which is a story that tells a moral story that has a lesson behind it, basically. And we know that Jesus spoke in many parables throughout the Bible. But on this Bible app, we have had many people comment about these parables. I want to thank you all, first of all, for just being open to getting on the Bible app and trying it out. I see a lot of great comments on there, and I'm seeing that a lot of people are actually in their word. So we know that daily, everybody who participate in the app, they're, they're in their word. Mm -hmm. So the first parable that we studied uh, on last week was the wise and the foolish builders. Uh, both are in Matthew and Luke. And the scripture comes from Luke chapter 6 and uh, 46 through 49. Do you have it pulled up, Miss Elise? I got it up. All right. Can you read that for us? Sure. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do, do not do what I tell you? I will show you what someone is like who comes to me, hears my words, and acts on them. That one is like a man building a house who dug deeply and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood arose, the river burst against that house but could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not act is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the river burst against it, immediately it fell and the and great was the ruin of that house. So, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Pastor Herb, the pastor here at Mount Vernon. And I have two ladies here. I want you all to introduce yourselves first before I ask you about what you wrote on this particular day. Okay. I'm Elise Jackson, a member here at Mount Vernon. My name's Amanda Williams. I'm new here, but, um, you know, <laughs> I'll talk You're about here. it. You're <laughs> here. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. So, Miss Elise, since you read, mm -hmm. would you like to share with the group what you actually wrote on that particular day? On that day. I did write. Let's pull it up. Let's see here. The good thing is that you can comment and you can also read everyone's comment every day so it's like you get bible study every day that's why i tell everybody to get on the app because we get a chance to come back and discuss these things and really dissect what we read so my comment that day was short um sometimes it's just who i am but i just said be intentional daily about doing god's will and building upon the foundation that he has built or building upon the rock you know um but also reflecting more and reading the scripture again, you know, it's about doing what God tells you to do, being obedient is part of it, you know, and that helps to build on that foundation, uh, which is God. So that's Amen. my comment. What about you, Miss Amanda? Okay. On um, mine. You wrote a lot. I can see you for right now. <laughs> like you like got paragraphs oh, okay lot. keep going let's go ahead but the verse that stuck out to me was matthew seven twenty six. this is the next one but it, it's and everyone who is hearing of me these words and is not doing them shall be likened to a foolish man who has built his house upon the sand and so i wrote that it is important to build a foundation on good principles values and god in anything that you do whether that be career relationship business new ventures friendship because without a strong foundation, whatever is built will not be able to stand when troubles come or when something shakes it up or when things become hard. Mm -hmm. Another way to see this is taking into consideration the amount of time it takes to build a good foundation. The right materials, patience, kindness, understanding, hard work, dedication and commitment it takes, investment and sacrifice. So if you rush and pass through all of that which is needed for a strong foundation in God, how can we expect 
the house not to give in when there is a storm, the tide changes, or the ground is shaken up. My goodness, that was deep. You like a preacher then. <laughs> Almost closely like a preacher. Like You broke that thing down, but that is very true, and that's actually where I was going with it. Mm -hmm. When you're building a house, the most important thing is the foundation. Yep. You, when you start building, in fact, if you don't have the right soil to build the foundation on, mm -hmm. then your house still will sink. I believe it was Brother Tim who told me that they realized that they could not build on the land across the street because of the soil. Am I correct? So, 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 so let's look at that according to our life. What is our foundation of life? Yeah. What is your foundation built on? One of the questions I have here is, how are you building? When you're on the budget, sometimes mm -hmm. we want to go cheap. We want to go the cheap route. <laughs> you know how, how, how we are. People like to go the cheap route. That's how we do with God. We go the cheap route. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Yeah, we give, him, we give him just a little bit of our time. I, I was sharing mm -hmm. with one of my friends. I was, I, I was sharing with Dr. Stanza when we was talking about this Bible study, and he thought it was very great. I said, well, I'm asking people to get on the Bible app. However, they'll be on Facebook five, six hours a day <laughs> just scrolling. But when they go to this Bible app, that's a foundation. You are building your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And I know I, I'm not and I'm not trying to just call anybody out or nothing like that. But how are you building? And I want you to think about that for yourself. How are you building? When we're talking about uh, a foundation, our foundation in Christ, it says examine the way in which we are building our lives and to ask what foundation we are building upon. Are you building your relationship with God on cookies and milk and cake and yeah. ice cream? And you, 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 you relate your relationship to God when, you, when you're going through, you get depressed. Then that's the first thing you do. Go get the ice cream and then go get down and pray with God. Mm -hmm. I'm just being, this is real life. Right. This is almost like a parable. Some people, that's what they do. They only go to God. When they depressed and down. Yep. Yeah. If we are honest, most of the time people really pray when they're going through. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, being a, when I was a campus pastor, I used to tell all the people, I say, don't worry, the kids will come. When they get their refund check, they ain't coming. Okay. They balling. <laughs> Let that refund check run out. That's when they coming. They'll come see Jesus then. Mm -hmm. When they broke and they going through. That's when they come see the Lord. But that's okay. Yeah. Because God, he still welcomes you with open arms. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. But I want us to examine how we are building the foundation. The Bible says, train up a child in the way that he should go. When he was old, he had never depart. His foundation is built, built up on Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I was coming up, I had Sunday school. Every Sunday, we used to wake up and get to the church at 8 a.m. And we used to do Sunday school. That was a foundation for me. Mm -hmm. We learned the books of the Bible. Yep. I used to be able to quote all the books of the Bible, all 66 of them. That was, that was foundation. <laughs> Oh, don't worry about it. We'll call you up so you can quote them, Miss, Miss Sydney. You know, I see you over there. I saw you over there with your lips moving. That means you still know them. Amen, Amen. right? You Amen. still know them. Amen. Amen. So what are you building? The next one. What are you building? Now, I'm throwing these questions out because I'm asking some other people to come up to the table, too, mm. because I want us to answer some of these questions. What are you building? You know, because most of us, we take time to build our savings account. Yeah. We take time to build all kinds of things. Some of us have car collections and, you know, ring collections and shoe collections. And we built these things. But do we take time to build upon the foundation of Jesus Christ? Right. And that's what this 
this this parable is talking about as we move to the next slide the next slide talks about foundation and fellowship how often do you read what is the process that you go through when you put them into practice in your life do you try to build your life on God's work by yourself or in a small group of builders so let's talk about that real quick fellowship is important iron sharpens Agreed. iron that's it mm. that's why i like this because i felt like um it's more people in this study in and outside the church that are learn if they don't have it or if they don't already have it in their practice you it encourages you to read daily it's something i've been doing a long long time yeah. but uh it encourages you to read daily and just reflect on your own personal life uh and that's building on the foundation that is the reason I wanted to do it because it's everybody that's here at Bible study for the most part y'all are the people that always come mm -hmm. but the others I want them to also get a chance to get a foundation and you can see that there are people who don't come to Bible study but they are commenting yeah. in the Bible app mm -hmm. so that means that they're getting a foundation yeah. that means that they're actually waking up and looking at it and even if they're not looking at it they're thinking about man let me catch up on my days <laughs> mm -hmm. so yeah. so it's purposeful it's not just to be doing something it's purposeful so technically we have 35 people in bible study right now Amen. Okay. technically because it's 35 people on our app coming to right. mm -hmm. I like that. so we are reaching people mm -hmm. so our main goal is to what reach people and guess what we are fellowshipping on this app daily mm -hmm. daily mm -hmm. and daily fellowship fellowship is important jesus uh he was at the table with his disciples and they fellowshiped the lord's supper mm -hmm. they hung out mm -hmm. broke bread with them fellowship is how you build a foundation that's how you build your relationship with God. Because if you never commune with him, if you never fellowship with him, if you never spend time with him, it says, how often do you read or listen to God's teaching? How often do you listen to sermons during the week? How often do you really want to cultivate the relationship that God gives you, is mm -hmm. trying to give you? Because here's the reality. That's what's going to save us when we go through yeah. When you have a foundation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're not going to be tossed and driven. Yep. Sure. See, everything can't throw you. I, I, I say this a lot. The first thing people do when they start going through is stop coming to church. Mm -hmm. And you will know your maturity when you can keep on coming regardless of what you're going through. And here's the thing. The fellowship it's going to help you because mm -hmm. when you see the other people, they're going to encourage you. They're going to talk to you, say, say how you doing? You might get something that you really need it. That's why it's important to fellowship together. Mm -hmm. So question, ladies, do you try to build in a small group or do you kind of stay to yourself? You don't really like to, to fellowship with people. Be honest. <laughs> I have a core group that I uh, build with that it keeps me encouraged. I really I got a core group of friends. They're real solid and they keep me encouraged. They'll check me. And okay. when we share, we had that kind of relationship, but it's, it's in love. It's in God's love that we do that. But there are some times where I retreat back, you know, dealing with things on my own. I know myself, but they know me too. They're like, girl, we ain't heard from you in a while. What's going on? You know, uh, but they will. I have a good core group that keeps me close to God, close to his word, reminding me of who I am, and we encourage each other. So, so accountability. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. They Amen. keep me accountable. Mm -hmm. How about you? Um, so I have one friend <laughs> that me and her might talk about our scriptures and stuff that we do during the week. And I'll probably talk to my dad, too. But there's not, I don't have a ton of friends that are really into church and building a foundation like I am so I just let them do them until they kind of get to that point where so ready. maybe you can help them yeah. bring them in mm -hmm. and when you are a friend That's then true. you are supposed to bring them into that foundation yeah. and help them build that therefore y'all can be stronger true. together 
Amen. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> amen. 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 So on the next slide, we have a comment from one of the people in the group because I will be pulling up the comments from the people on the Bible app. Your comment might be in Bible study. You may <laughs> never know. So take some time to write your comments. You know, uh, this comment comes from Nancy Smith. She said, today's devotion reminded me to make sure that I'm focused on building a steady and stable foundation here we go spiritually and mentally that is christ-centered mm -hmm. i get so caught up with business helping everyone else but i must remember that i have a foundation to build for the kingdom as well how many of us do that yeah. just get so caught up in business get so caught up in other things that oftentimes we'll forget Christ and we'll forget the things that we need to do for God. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, I want to call some other people to the table. Who want to come up? Who want to come up? Come on, Summer and Jamil. Why don't y'all come up to the table? Come on, have a conversation with me real quick. We're going to talk about foundation. So, Summer, question for you. I, I know you have a foundation in Christ. So tell me about foundation. Uh, you grew up in church. I was your youth pastor, so I know you have a foundation, which means what was really cool for me is that you even come to Mount Vernon now. That shows something part of your foundation. So talk to me about a foundation. If you were a young person, talk to a young person when you were 16 and tell them what about church made you stay? What, what gave you a firm foundation in Christ? Um, as you said, my mom was in church. Uh, my granny was also in church. And when I was little, it was just like, okay, I'm going just because, um, you know, my parents are going or because my family's going. But I started going to some of the camps and some of the stuff stuck with me. So whenever I felt like I was like falling off or something, just something didn't feel right in me. And I was like, okay, well, when I was going to church, I was feeling okay. You know, I was feeling blessed, happy and everything. So something was just like stick to that and see where it goes and like i said when i was in college i didn't really like any of the churches out there so i wasn't really going so when i came home i wanted to make sure i got back on that and i'm glad i did so 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 would you say that your foundation in christ helped you to become the person you are today definitely because it'd be some hard times and I like to pray like every day, not just, you know, when things get hard. And I feel like that makes a big difference. So I don't feel bad like, oh, hey, God, it's me again. You know, just when something going wrong, it's like, okay, well, I pray to you anyway. But now I'm going to pray to you about this specific thing. So it's important to have a relationship is what you're saying. Yeah. Mia, tell me about foundation. You are here. Uh, you, you came here. So apparently... There must be something or some friend or fellowship. I know some is your friend. So Summer told you about the Bible study, correct? Yes, I asked her about it. And um, yeah. So, I, so that's a part of fellowshipping, what we talked about. So you're not just fellowshipping in the church. You're fellowshipping outside the church, too. Shows foundation. All right, so, so tell me what is your foundation so far in Jesus Christ? As a child, I did attend church on a regular, but uh, I moved around a lot. So, like, every two years, I would move to a new spot and, you know, just get in the transportation to and back. It was adult as adults, you know, they get busy. They have things to do. So, um, I did have a regular church that I went to for a while, but then things just ended up happening and I stopped going. Um, all throughout the years, I have attended a few different churches. It was another one I attended regularly when I lived somewhere for a little bit. And I went because it was just a time and a space for me to be with friends and have something to do like in the morning. So, yeah. As an adult, because you're here on the Wednesday night, which shows that growing up, the seed that was planted in you begin to grow because now you you're seeking it out on your own mm -hmm. 
that's that's foundation all right thank you i'm gonna call y'all back up but i want to introduce this new topic with my season saints so come on up mr tim and miss holly come on up our next parable is forgiving unequal debts the text is in luke mark and matthew this is going to be a real good one that's why i wanted some seasoned saints up here to talk about this in summer and jamil you all can come back up afterwards uh, miss holly if you don't mind can you read matter of fact introduce yourselves first i'm holly bennett and you a lifelong member of Mount Vernon? Yes. Tim Bennett, a lifelong member of Mount Vernon. Mr. Mount Vernon. Well, I mean, That's what they told me when I first came here, <laughs> that you were Mr. Mount Vernon. Well, that's that, that's, that is correct. That's Your wife that's. second that. We, we go go with that. So Mr. Mount Vernon is at the table, so I expect some good stuff to come from this. So Ms. Holly, can you read Matthew 6? Uh, yeah. Yes, it is. Okay. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. So, so I ask this question, Brother Tim. What is forgiveness to you? Mm -hmm. It is the most important thing to Jesus Christ for us. Okay, that's true, but I need some more. I need more. What is forgiveness? That's it. Forgiving, forgiving. Well, I mean, yeah, I, well, yeah, forgiveness. It means is, to let go and to. And, and forgiveness is not for you. It's for uh, the. It's, it, for, it's it, for the other person. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. For you. It's for the other person. Jesus forgave us for our sins. So he died on the cross for our sins. And he forgave us for our sins. And then, of course, ultimately, he forgave those who even took his life. That's correct. On that very day, he asked his fathers to forgive them, for they know not what to do. So that's why I say forgiveness is one of the most important things to Jesus Christ. It is, because he says if, if you cannot forgive your brother of their sins, he cannot forgive you. That's right. So at the end of the day... It, you will be still living in sin Lord if you mercy. can't forgive your brother or your sister of their faults mm. because you're going to want that mm. same forgiveness. Mm. So Jesus explains the power of forgiveness. There is power in forgiving. Mm, when, you, when you don't forgive, you let another person have power over you. Lord have mercy. And then you Lord. mess around and you are holding this in your heart mm -hmm. and it ultimately depresses you. Ultimately. So forgiveness is very important. It is important. But to forgive is also to move on from it. Mm -hmm. Because some people say they forgive and still hold on. But forgive and be okay with it that's the most you know people hold grudges that's that's one thing people hold grudges you know few family feuds have been going on for a long time mm -hmm. what's that the Hatfields and McCoys you know we know that they feuding for 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 a long time young people probably don't even know what I'm talking about up here today <laughs> but Jesus explained the value of forgiveness to a person who is in need of much forgiveness so Think about that. He is explaining in this parable to a person who is really in need of much forgiveness. He's telling them how important it is to forgive because they want forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So, Miss Holly, what did you write on this day? Matter of fact, you don't have your phone. Don't have my phone. You don't have your phone. And I think I said I forgive, but I don't forget. And I'm working on that. The one thing I like about you is you very honest. And that's that's good. That's a good that's the first step. Mm -hmm. Knowing who you are. Mm -hmm. When you know who you are, then you can move forward. Right. That's the great thing about it. Jesus shows that because of his great great mercy, we should show great mercy towards others. It reminds me of that story of David and the man. 
tell me that story. You know the story. I know you know the story of David and that man. And, and he had to, the one little lamb. Oh, Saul. Yeah, okay. tell that story real quick because uh, that's they, a great well, not story. Saul, but, uh, yeah, well, oh, David. What well, David had. St- what, what, you can tell the story. It's not going to take that long. Okay. Just, just shorten it up. Okay, all right. Well, well, Samuel came to David and he was telling him, Nathan. Nathan came, Nathan yes, came to David. The prophet. Was, was telling him of what he had done, but in a parable. In a parable. In a see, parable. Now, you know, you go with you. See, you see, well, I'm going with this. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He was telling him of a man who had a precious, precious lamb. And then the man, you know, it, it went on and he told, I'm going to tell all the whole story, but the bottom line of the story is this man took this man lamb and killed it and ate it and so forth and so on. And then so he was telling them about himself because he took a precious lamb, which took was Uriah's wife. Uriah's wife took that precious man's lamb for himself. And David, you know, got through the, was, oh, we need to go get him right go now. Get him. And kill him for taking that man lamb and eating it. And uh, said, well, well, that's you, David. That is you. You are the man. You are the man. Yeah. You the one that took the lamb. And then David, uh, uh, David began to ask for yeah, forgiveness. Yeah, just blubbering like a girl, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's all true. That's all true. And he was. Yeah. But the good thing is about about that is God forgave David. Mm. David was a murderer, adulterer. Many of us, boy, if we would have put David on Facebook right now, <laughs> they listen, David would have lost everything. <laughs> they would have yeah. told his yeah. reputation yeah. up. Mm-hmm. But it's so good that God will forgive us of our sins. Mm-hmm. Forgiveness, well, like you said. We're supposed to be modeling that forgiveness. And we supposed to forgive, <laughs> forget our sins like Jesus got God forgives us. Listen, y'all must have got some <laughs> inside stuff going on here because since y'all got to this table, y'all have been going oh, back. Okay. Big Tell me I'm close to you so we can My husband is trying to save the world. No, okay, I told to him about people it. have to save move in their, person. their own steps. <laughs> yeah. And then he got this thing about who you're supposed to give. I said, you don't know the whole story. Mm-mm. And I've had Mm-mm. examples where I have forgiven Mm-mm. people. Mm-mm. And, you know, you try to talk to them and have conversations. Mm-mm. And they ignore you. Uh, just keep on walking Mm-mm. and don't talk to you. So Mm-mm. I just say, well, I tried. Forget it. Mm-mm. And and just because cause we have a family member and Tim feels like I should go to her. And forgive her. And forgive her. Praise the Lord. And Amen. I to, and now he talking about Maybe God I'm about y'all house, love for and forgiveness. We don't go over her house. I said you don't just go over people's houses. I'm not just going you over. Know. I tell you I'm a caller. <laughs> <laughs> We're not just going over. <laughs> but I don't even think about it. That's that's something on him. Oh. Cuz I I've forgotten about the situation oh, yeah. and I'm done. Mm-mm, I need but to, he, he to be in heaven with me. So praise the to, Lord. You have to forgive. praise the Lord. Praise I have the Lord. Like God. Just because I don't <laughs> conversate with the person or be in their face, no, doesn't no, mean you don't forgive. I like, that's not forgiveness. That's that's your that's, version. That's in your mind. No, no. You the scripture says this is between me and God. The scripture oh, no, says no, 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 it's not between you and God. It's between you and that person here on earth. God's that's good. Right. He don't care. You just do however you want to do it. But he gonna ask you about it when you get there. Yeah. And don't think he gonna forget because he ain't gonna forget. He gonna ask you about it, and you gonna be like. <laughs> What? <laughs> he going to be like, y'all talked about it in Bible study. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, 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 y'all, and y'all, it's ironic because I didn't know. I just called y'all up on this topic. <laughs> so that must mean that God is speaking. Mm-hmm. He is speaking about the power of forgiveness. <laughs> hey, not, man. You, you got to go and forgive. Amen. <laughs> Let me bring the two young ladies back. Please. I'm going to let you Come on back, so I love forgiveness. Hey, man. Boy, you boy, look at you. Boy, look at you, my boy. I tell you. You done a good job. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Woo. My goodness, I you know I, I was I, you know I was feeling something, but I didn't know you know I'm like well 
All right, you know, especially with the young people coming, y'all don't hardly forgive that much these days. Y'all cut people off and move on. And with y'all say my cutoff game strong and all that kind of stuff like that. So talk to me about forgiveness. Have there been a situation? The reflection today is this as we move to the next slide. Is there anyone? Oh, I should have kept y'all up here for this one. Is there anyone you need to seek forgiveness from? Let's talk about that real quick. Do you think there's anyone you need to seek forgiveness from? That like they need to forgive me or I need to forgive them? Anybody you need to forgive or they need to forgive you? Either, either one. Plenty. <laughs> um, Do you mind telling us about one of the plenty situations where you need to forgive or somebody... You know, something you holding on to that you may need to, that you thought about that you need to forgive somebody or what? Um, I'm not sure if someone needs to forgive me on something. Um, I would hope if they have an issue or some type or feel any type of way, they would bring that up with me. But in terms of me forgiving someone, I would say at the moment, my sister uh right now she's in a, um, a hard place but it's you know i'm able to still speak to her but you know i still you holding on yeah. to some stuff yes all right all right summer uh, i'm not gonna get specific but um i did have surgery i want to say last year and someone that everyone including me would expect it to like be there and help me they did the exact opposite or like when they were helping me it was like uh, like okay let's do this or do I gotta do that da 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 and so I thought I was past it but me and my mom were talking about it the other day and I was just like you hold it I, yeah too. I was like still messed up about it so I was just thinking about you and that person today too <laughs> well <laughs> apparently there are some things that we need to work on in forgiveness. I tell you, these Bible studies are great because this is a time to really think about how we can begin that journey. And it is a journey. And it doesn't happen overnight. Let me tell you, forgiveness takes time. But when you can get to the point that you can forgive and move on, that's when you know you matured in Christ. When you can really just say, you know what? I'm not going to let this keep me from my blessings. Because ultimately, when you can't forgive, you wondering why some doors are closed that you won't open. It's because of what you're holding in your heart. And we also know that the scripture talks about not taking the communion unworthy. It says if you have alt against your brother or your sister, drop everything and go ask for forgiveness. And if they don't forgive you, that's on them. You, you just got to start getting free. You got to just start letting it go. Because when you hold it on, hold on to it, you are really missing out and holding, uh, holding your own blessings hostage. Who do you need to humble yourselves before and ask for their forgiveness where you might have wronged somebody? Have you wronged somebody that you know? That you need forgiveness from. Not, not that you can think of. Not really. So y'all just be straight up angels. Well, I can say. Um, y'all look like them. Y'all look like them. Y'all look like y'all good. Y'all. Well, look one of my friends back at school, we had kind of. I don't want to say we fell off, but I had just got like super busy because I was doing like a bunch of events and still doing sports and stuff and so me and her weren't really hanging out as much and I just felt like we got kind of distant and even when I had like more time and everything the relationship just wasn't the same and so I did feel like it was my fault because I was the busy one so okay okay yeah good deal so Thank you all for sharing with us now I'm going to read on the next slide Miss Danessa Hers really hit home. It says, let stuff go and truly move on. 
as long as I am holding on to bitterness, there is an attachment to the source of the pain. Boy, that's powerful. So when you hold on, you, you attach yourself to the pain. And you're going to always identify. As soon as you see that person, you identify that person as pain. That's deep. But when you learn to let it go, then every time you see that person, you won't be tense. You know how it is. When you see somebody you don't really like, they can mess up your whole day. My goodness. I'm telling you, you could be in a good mood and see somebody that you need to forgive or they need to you you they need forgiveness from you and that just tear up your whole day but we at a point in time in life now where life is really getting short see people dying every day and when you holding on to that unforgiveness you know most of the time people think about sin they think about the big sins they think about the big sins but it, it don't take but a little bit a little bit and I tell people all the time it's no different between the sins because unforgiveness is just like adultery it's going to be counted unto you as the same so I want us to walk away from this this forgiveness topic and remember that if we cannot forgive our brothers and sisters. We cannot expect God to forgive us. Miss Callaway, can you come up? Miss Callaway and uh, Miss Sydney, come on. If, if Miss Callaway come up, you can come up. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Miss Callaway and Miss Sydney. Come on up. We got one more topic and we done. It's the parable of the sore and the saws. The text is in Luke, Mark, and Matthew. You have yours pulled up. I'll have you read the text. The text is in Mark 14, Mark 4, 15 through 20. And this is one that we know. Now, you got to get on the mic. You got to make sure. Yes, pull your seat up. Okay. Praise the Lord. We're going to get some good wisdom, Miss Calloway, up here. Oh, Praise the Lord. <laughs> All right. So, can you read for us or introduce yourselves? Linda Calloway. I'm Sydney Michelle. Amen. Go ahead. Who's reading? You. You. Oh. <laughs> These are the one. What, what? You're going to read Mark 4. Oh. Starting at 15. Starting at 15 through 20. These are the ones on the path where the word is sown. When they hear Satan immediately come, when they hear Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground. When they hear the word, they immediately receive it with joy. But they have no root and endure only for a while. Then when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are and others are those sown among the thorns. These are the ones who hear the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth and the desire for other things come in and choke the word and it yields nothing. And these are the ones sown on the good soil. They hear the word and accept it and bear fruit, 30 and 60 and 100 fold. All right. So, Miss Calloway, you didn't get a chance to start the app. We're going to get you on that Bible app before we reading. leave. I've Reading. You've been reading. Yeah. So, so Miss Sidney, can you tell us what you wrote for that day? Mm, did I write on, on something that day? Oh, don't you don't have to tell me because I'm gonna read yours. Yours is the one I picked for oh. this day. Oh. Amen. <laughs> okay. Praise the Lord. All right. You can pull up Miss Sidney's comment and we'll start there. And you can read your own comment. This parable speaks to me about maturity in Christ. As baby Christians, the word can fall on rocky ground or the path, and we have both and we have both ideas about what God is saying. We have both. I don't know what I'm saying. But we continue to grow. We may start to understand the word and are excited to begin doing it. But because our faith is still small, life knocks us down and we return to our old ways. I know I've been all of these, but I'm grateful that my desire to please God is greater than anything else. 
I've learned to embed his word and obey it more. I want my seed to produce great fruit. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's a blessing because I like what she said. She said that she have been all of those mm -hmm. at some point. Mm -hmm. My goodness. And if we are honest, we many are of there. us have been all of that. At one point in time, it says this parable speaks powerfully to the state of our heart. So it's talking about our heart and how receptive we are to the word of God. I'm going to tell you, I, I preach every Sunday. I watch people walk out of here and they ain't got no word. I watch people walk out the same way. So that's how I know. As some, I used to be that same way, though. Mm -hmm. I used to hear that word and then go back out there like I ain't heard the word. And that's when we become like that seed. It, it, we have no root. It, it's sprouting up because we come into church, but guess what? As soon as we go through a trial. But that parable also reminds me, Pastor, of people that come to church. They hear the word. They're all hyped up while they're in church. And the minute they walk out the door, mm -hmm. that joy that they were expressing in church, hallelujah, all of that. It's like, who is this person? A whole different person. A whole different person. Mm -hmm. It's a whole different person. So it's not bedding down in their soul to be a uh, Christian and to do what they need to do. It's like, I hear it. Like most people, uh, you, you hear something, you feel good about it, and once it's gone. And that's what a lot of Christians do is when they come to church. They come to hear the word, and that's all they do is hear, and it just goes right through. So it's it like they're getting the Christian high. Yeah, it, yeah. Well, they're not even getting Christian it's high because it's not even staying. I mean, it, it, right. Well, that's how it, how, when you get high, it don't well, even stay for so long. Well, it, it don't stay all day. Well, Pastor, it doesn't even stay past them leaving out the church. You would think that. So, so church lasts technically about an hour in most, in our case anyway. Mm -hmm. Most most churches that last maybe three hours or two hours, depending on. This doesn't last an hour. So you said the joy I mean, that they have just, don't last an hour. It doesn't last an hour. I mean, you say so you they ain't even really got a high. No. But once you get to a point where you're at that stage where you really want to know the word, you one of the things that I do is I get that lesson that I've learned on Sunday and I use that as my as study for the week. Yes. You know, I you know, no. delve more into it. For the week coming up you know yeah. after that so that i can learn even more you know get the background on it and and really embed it inside yeah. you know the one thing you can tell when somebody really uh in that word during the week mm -hmm. like they got the seed in them because when they come to church you ain't got to pump them up to get praise <laughs> they come no praise you you can tell like like you can tell like when when the spirit really hits somebody it's because they've been really in that in that word and and they've been soaking themselves in the word the word ought to convict convert change and challenge you yeah. mm -hmm. now that's something that's what it's supposed to do for you what do you think we don't about like that? that challenge part yeah. well, no no i'll convict <laughs> <laughs> we don't like the challenge yeah you know coming to church and uh being in church for me is like fuel you know i always tell people i go get fueled up and mm -hmm. it carries me through and it makes me the word what you hear you try to live by it you try to grow on it gets you through the week mm -hmm. and it makes you want to do more you know i always say that i'm trying to work on me I'm trying to develop that relationship with God where it stays with me day in and day out. But you sound like the seed that was sown on good soil and it's producing some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. See, most people, like, like we just talked about, you, you, you even didn't. I was trying to say they had a little spiritual high. You said they didn't even get high. They just <laughs> was there for a minute. So that's that's the ones that fell along the wayside right there. That's the ones that fell by the wayside. But can we see how these parables are really teaching us about ourselves? Mm -hmm. And the one thing I like, like you said, you really bought that home. Like at one point in everybody's life, there have been all of those, oh, okay. and now at this point. People ought to strive to be the ones producing fruit. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
So what do you think about challenging? You said people don't like challenge. What What is it that people don't like about being challenged by the word? There are times when, you know, you feel in churches like, oh, okay, you talk, then, you know, the pastor is talking directly to you. Or, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, he on my street. Right. <laughs> but, you know, because of where we are, maybe in that situation or whatever, it's like, hmm. You know, it's like, no, I'm, I'm like, like, like forgiveness. It's like, yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm a little different from that. I like a challenge. Amen. Because I challenge myself a lot mm-hmm. of times mm-hmm. to do things. Even if it's not something I want to do, I challenge myself to do it. So I'm always up for a challenge. I don't ever run from a challenge. I embrace it. But what about this last word, change? I Let's talk about that. Change? Because sometimes the word of God ought to change you. And oh, challenge yeah. Oh, yeah. your situation. Yes. Mm-hmm. All the time. Yeah. Should change you all the time. But a lot of times people don't like to change. Well, if you're reading the word, if you're trying to be better, you mm-hmm. will change. Exactly. I mean, if and you're really reading the word and you want to do what the word says, you will change. So if you change, that means you also have had a conversion. So, so, a so conversion. the word ought to convert you to something different. different. Right. You right. cannot be the same individual. Mm-hmm. You should not be the same after hearing the word of God. Something ought to change about you. Con- convict, convert, change, challenge. Um, reflection. Where do you see the most fruit being produced in your life for God? For me, it's in giving, um, serving, uh, making provisions for others, uh, knowing that God has blessed me immensely and that I share that blessing that he, provide, that he provides me with. He didn't give me a blessing for me to sit on it and keep it. He gives me a blessing to share it. So I see myself sharing and giving uh, to others. I have always done that, but as I grow, I see that that's a part of what I need to do and who I should be. So that's why I see myself doing. So for me right now, I guess I see my greatest fruit in, um, you know, through my children and not just my Amen. biological children, but even children here at the church that I've, you know, taught in Sunday school and vacation Bible school, when I see them get to that point of relationship with God and where they're taking it very seriously. Uh, So earlier this year, um, uh, I went to go see Hannah when she was dancing. She's on the praise dance team at, at school. And, you know, I was able to witness her worship in a way that I had never, ever seen her worship before. And so that was just extremely uh, emotional for me you saw the fruit I, I saw the fruit and then I you know and so for me you know like uh, I heard a lady one time on the radio she says if I have not done anything else you know I want to know before I leave this earth that my children mm-hmm. have a relationship with God and that they are going to serve the way God wants to serve and I and that's what I want for my children yes of course I want them to have great careers I want them to you know have nice things but I want them to have a relationship with Foundation. God. Foundation. <laughs> yes. Come on. Come and on. I want Come them on. to be servants of God more than anything. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Last one. What fruit do you want to see produced at 30, 60, 100 fold return in your life? I don't even know if I understand that question. So I'll, I'll answer. <laughs> I want to see this church mm. become one of the greatest churches in fifth mm. ward the seeds that are being sown the new innovative things that we are doing i want to see others do the things that we're doing because they already some people are already doing the stuff we're doing they they checking us out people checking us out on a daily basis i want to see the fruit and the life of the people change families change mm-hmm. i want to see i want to see uh individuals change i want to see people get on fire mm-hmm. for god that's the fruit that i want to see grow uh 30 60 i want to see the young people the young adults see i want to see the young adults just on fire for god and doing things for God and and that be their main focus. Mm-hmm. I want to see all of us put him first. Yeah. I mean cuz ultimately 
that's all we've talked about today. We've talked about putting God first. The first thing was the parable of the wise and the foolish builders. See, God is doing something in this, in this type of uh, setting, uh, showing us how to build, showing us what the foundation needs to be, showing us how we need to fellowship. Uh, we talked about forgiveness. You can't really fellowship with people unless you forgive them. I'm sure there's people in this church that need to forgive people and move on so they can fellowship and do the things that we need to do together. And that's the power of forgiveness. And then lastly, sowing seeds. Mm -hmm. We all need to be sowing seeds. Whatever that seed is, and I'm telling you, seed is not always money because Oftentimes when people think about the seed, that's what they think about, sowing money. Sow love. Your time. Sow time. Mm -hmm. Your talents, your treasures. Mm -hmm. Show sh sow joy. Mm -hmm. Sow peace to people. Because in reality, a lot of people need peace. Peace of mm -hmm. mind. Do you all have any questions, comments, prayer requests? If you would like to say something before we go, you are welcome to come to the table. Uh, come on. So, you know, I just got back in town today. Let me scoot up. And my real heart wanted me to stay at home on my sofa. I said, I really want to stay at home on my sofa. Uh huh. But something happened to a really close family member of mine. Uh, she was laid off today. Uh huh. And I talked to her. I was like, you know, what you need me to do? She's like, at least I'm okay. I just wanted you to know what was going on. And for me, it just reminded me that God is the one that keeps us, not the jobs. My goodness. And not those things. And so that's why I was like, hey, let me get my butt up and get over here to Bible study. <laughs> get my midweek going or whatever. And um, I want to keep uh, my aunt in prayer. And I'm um, just thankful for her as my angel. And, you know, I know she'll be fine. Well, you know, that's the foundation. Mm -hmm. Because when you have your foundation in Christ, you don't have to worry about those things. Because ultimately, God is the one that is your pro provider. He gave you that job. Mm -hmm. And just like he gave you that one. Another one. He give you a better one. There you go. See, when you connect it, when you mm -hmm. connect it, you don't have to worry. That's why I, I, on this week I was going through some things in my mind, but I was like, you know what? God got a plan. He do all the time. So all I have to do is make sure my foundation is in Him, mm -hmm. and I'm connected. Anybody else have prayer requests? All right. If there's nothing else, we're gonna pray. Thank you all for coming out today to this first podcast Bible study. Well, let us pray. We go, we go get out of here and get home. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time, God, to commune with you and, and study, God. We pray that everyone on this app, God, that you begin to change their lives, that you begin to touch their lives, even if they are not here in Bible study. If they go back and watch this podcast, God, I pray that you touch their life, God, in such a way that someone will build on a solid foundation, that someone will forgive, and that someone will sow good seeds and sow into good ground. God, we thank you for traveling grace as we leave this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all for coming.